I met Sudan first in 2014 when I came to work here as a um, care rhino caretaker. Uh, at first I was so scared of him um, but over time and taking a lot of time to interact with him the bond grew over with time and uh, by the time we passed we had become very good friends. Looking after Sudan entailed um, waking up very early in the morning, checking his uh, body condition, um, then um, cleaning his pens, making sure the watering trowels were clean, the feeding areas were clean, uh, making sure the wallowing points were, were at mud, that he would take a mud bath. And uh, at times people would come to visit him, and so we would have like introduced them to Sudan and uh, basically, you know, make sure that he slept well and he woke up well every other day. I worked with Sudan for four years and around two months by the time he passed. Over time, my feelings for Sudan grew, especially the fact that um, he was the last male known Northern White China and that uh, the weight of what he stood for, um, I perceived it in a very big way. It represented the phase of extinction and so it made me more compassionate and more so uh, try to, you know, speak for him and, and, and advocate for what he stood for and on behalf of other endangered species that are, you know, about to go extinct because of our human activities. I bet Sudan thought that I was uh, his friend, just like I saw him. So many knew him as a rhino, but I knew him as a friend. And so I think the feeling was mutual, that um, he knew me as a friend and I knew him as a friend. And so that helped our bond to be that strong in that regard. I was personally changed um, by the virtue of what he represented, being the last of his kind. But I also tried to um, act on his behalf, assuming what he would literally say if he had a chance to speak, like as humans. And so I, I, used, I always used the first person point of it, trying to voice him out and trying to speak uh, on his behalf on every opportunity that came up or wherever I had a chance to speak to anyone concerning the rhinos. And so I believe uh, we affected each other in such a way that um, I felt I understood him better than anyone. And that um, was one way that I would also use it as an, a, a channel to be able to speak on his behalf. <coughs> I would, uh, I believe Sudan's legacy was more of uh, an high opener to humans. I mean, he stood for what is happening in the contemporary world. I mean, the, we are losing so much iconic species. We are also losing um, so much of what is meant to exist uh, at the same time to, by us humans. And so, I believe Sudan's legacy is we should rise above the definitions we know of what extinction is and learn it through him because he, start, he stood quite at the balance. Uh, they're now hanging there whether they're going to go extinct or they're going to continue living through artificial or scientific in intervention. So I believe his greatest legacy is for us to open our eyes and see the reality of what extinction is.